This conference will now be recorded. Okay, fine, fine. Yeah, yeah, just okay. Okay, thank you. Hello, uh, are you able to hear me? Jessica, Deepika, uh, Pavan Kumar, Navya, and Cherishma. Yes, sir. Please unmute your mics and introduce yourself. Hi, Pawan Kumar. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Hi, Navya. Hi, Cherishma. Hi, sir. Yeah, hi. Hi, sir. Yeah, hi. So, today is our first class in uh, Java. Okay, so I'm going to give you demonstration on Java. So, I hope you are all from BTEC background, right? Jessica and Deepika. No, sir. MCA. Oh, okay. MCA. Okay. Okay. MCA. Fine. Fine. A anything is fine. We take all. Pursuing two thousand twenty-three batch. Okay. Okay. Fine. Fine. Cherishma, what about you? B Tech, sir. B Tech. Very good. Okay. Deepika. MCA, sir. MCA. Okay. Jessica, uh, I'm unable to hear you. Hear your voice. Can you please speak? Jessica. Sir, yes, sir. Yes, yes. Now I'm able to hear you. Thank you. So you're from BTEC or MCA? MCA, sir. MCA, sir. Okay. Fine, fine. Very good. Okay. Okay. So today is our demo class in Java. Okay. So uh, if you have any questions in middle, please, uh, you can unmute your mic and you can ask me. Okay. So some more students are going to join. Please wait. Please give me uh, a couple of minutes. We will start the class. What's your name? Vinay. Okay. Sink your nose, Nara. Okay. 
So this is your first class, right? Java. So you're from BTEC or MCA? BTEC. Which branch? EC. Hi, Madhu. Hi, sir. Conference will now be recorded. Yes, Madhu. Uh, are you from BTEC or MCA? MCA, sir. MCA, sir. MCA, sir. Hello all. Uh, so today we are going to uh, see the de uh, demonstration on Java. Okay, Java programming language. So to learn uh, about Java programming language, first we need to have an idea about object-oriented programming methodology. So. What is meant by object oriented uh, programming methodology? So, based on this programming methodology, object oriented programming languages are designed. Understand? Object oriented programming languages are designed based on this object oriented programming methodology. So what are the different object oriented programming languages we have in the market? Name some. Java. C++. Python. Python. .NET. Sorry? .NET. Okay. .NET is a framework actually. It's a, it's a package where we have uh, C sharp is the object oriented programming language. Okay. So entire.net we cannot consider as a programming language it's a package okay so it has languages and frameworks okay uh, c sharp is a programming language from the dotnet package okay and okay. also we have a scala okay so these are the object oriented programming languages in the market okay so to learn uh, to learn about uh, any of these programming languages first we should have a clear idea about object oriented programming methodology as part of object oriented programming methodology, we have a concepts like encapsulation, abstraction, polymorphic, inheritance, polymorphic. polymorphic. Okay, so these are the only four concepts there in the object oriented programming methodology. Okay, so there are so many other object oriented programming concepts are there, but all those are derived from these four concepts only. These four are the major concepts in the object-oriented programming methodology. So if anybody wants to learn object-oriented programming language, Java, or C++, Python, object-oriented PHP, C Sharp, Scala, or, or, or any object-oriented programming language, if anybody wants to learn, 
first they need to have a clear idea about these four concepts those who are strong in understanding uh, about these four concepts for them it is very easy to learn java language got my point so before going to learn about this object oriented programming methodology concepts first we should have a an idea about what is a real time entry What is a real time entity? After that, we need to learn about class. What is meant by a class? Then we need to discuss about object. What is meant by an object? So once we discuss about these three topics, then we are eligible to understand what is encapsulation, what is abstraction, what is inheritance and polymorphism. Okay. So before going to start with real time entity, so I want to give you some brief uh, introduction about how object oriented programming language programming methodology is introduced, why it is introduced, what forces the software community to uh, to introduce this object oriented programming methodology that we are going to discuss. Okay, so before object oriented programming languages, what kind of languages are there in the market? That means I am talking. Uh, 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 I'm talking about what are the legacy programming languages we have in the market. That means this object oriented programming languages are there from nine, uh, mid 90s onwards. Understand? So before 95 that year. So there are no object oriented programming languages are there in the market. There is no Java. Nothing is there. Understand? So yeah. So before going to uh, see how this uh, i mean wh why this object oriented programming methodology is introduced what forces the software community to introduce this methodology that i want to explain to you okay so before these programming languages we have procedural oriented programming languages are there procedural oriented programming languages are there in the market okay so what is other type of scripting languages are there scripting languages okay so what are the examples of the procedural oriented programming languages c cobol pascal fortran etc okay so what are the scripting languages we have in the market in those days shell scripting etc and also we have web technologies like html css javascript, JavaScript. okay so before uh, 95s so if we want to develop any software application using any of these uh, languages we can develop uh, any software application okay so as we have these many languages are there in the market so why what forces the software community to develop to introduce this object oriented programming methodology what forces them to develop okay so i'm talking about before 95 okay what forces the software community to develop this object, object oriented programming methodology so because they're, they, 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 they are facing some enterprise capabilities, they are facing challenges in enterprise capabilities. What are those enterprise challenges? Okay, first one is security. Logging, transactions, multi-user management. multi threading so these are the several enterprise challenges they are facing to develop enterprise applications okay so the these these challenges we can consider as a enterprise challenges so first of all what is meant by an enterprise applications what is meant by an enterprise applications i'll give some examples okay so e-commerce applications banking 
reservation systems hospitality delivery applications okay what else matrimonial websites okay so these are the <clears throat> different examples of enterprise applications okay so let me uh, so tell me one thing so before 95s do we have these applications in the market do we have amazon kind of applications do we have irctc kind of applications do we have redbus do we have uh, delivery applications like uh, <clears throat> what a uh, swiggy zomato uh, when uh, so coming to logistics applications like uh, uh, courier services okay uh, uh, blue dot so do we have such kind of applications before 95s no right so there is no point of uh, so discussion about all these kind of user requirements understand so so before 95s, it is very difficult to develop this kind of enterprise applications. It is very difficult to think about it, first of all. Understand security, logging, transaction, multi-user management, multi-threading. So there are even, the, uh, I mean, I mean uh, uh, frankly speaking, there is, there is no business requirement at all, first of all. So before 95s, there is no business requirement. So whatever the application they want to develop at an organization level, they will develop using these processor oriented programming languages only understand so so what approach this processor oriented programming languages are following top down approach so what is meant by top down approach top down approach is nothing but execution starts from the first line and it ends at the last line that's it it, it follows the top down approach and sequentially it is going to execute line by line that's it even though we are writing functions the control goes to the function and after the completion of execution of that function again it will come back to the uh, uh, so parent uh, script and it, it continues the rest of the program so there is no chance of parallel execution uh, in, in the application development okay so so have you ever observed a, a, a parallel execution in c language no right execution starts at the main method and it ends at the end of the file okay there is no chance of parallel processing we can say what is parallel processing so these are all the different enterprise challenges we have in the market in the software community in those days so that is the reason why to develop these kind of robust enterprise applications so they are forced to uh, think about object oriented methodology they are forced to introduce this object oriented programming methodology concepts so what concepts are there in the object oriented programming methodology we have encapsulation abstraction inheritance and polymorphism okay so these four concepts are nothing but object oriented programming methodology concepts okay so using these four programming uh, four concepts they introduced, they designed the programming language like Java, C++, Python, Object Oriented, PHP, C Sharp, Scala, etc. Understand? So, our main target today is to understand these four concepts. Okay? To understand these four concepts, we need to have a clear idea about what is meant by real-time entity, what is meant by a class, and what is meant by object. Understand? Got my point? So, first we need to understand about these three topics. After then, we are going to discussing about these four concepts. Okay. So, why we need to understand these concepts? Why we need to learn about these concepts? Because to, to learn Java programming language or to learn any other object-oriented programming language, these concepts are must. Understand? Those who have good understanding about these four these concepts, they will easily learn uh, object oriented programming language okay got my point any questions so far why object oriented no, programming methodology is introduced to provide or to uh, provide solution for these enterprise challenges okay so or to develop these kind of enterprise applications robust applications okay so in our childhood days there is no irctc application 
there is no e-commerce there is no banking understand there is no there is nothing is there okay so all these kind of applications are developed only after in uh, this object oriented programming methodology is introduced got my point so now uh, we are going to start with real time entity what is meant by real time entity any idea can someone please unmute your mic and tell me the answer any what is meant by real time entity okay so real time entity is nothing but everything we are seeing with our eyes everything in this world can be considered as a real time entity okay whether it might be the table television laptop mobile drawing board fan tube light room bus vehicles okay sky sun moon air water everything in this world can be treated as a real time entity understand so when we talk about the real time entity so two things in common in every real time entity what are those properties and behaviors properties and behaviors if you take any real time entity in every real time entity these two things will be there one is properties and behaviors if you are not seeing properties and behaviors in anything that will not be considered as a real time entity you got my point okay so let's take an example first take a tube light now tell me what are the properties of the tube light tell me what are what are the properties of the tube light tube light is a real time entity right tell me what are the properties of the tube light tube filament choke starter electricity wires electricity wires etc right uh, tube light holder main thing tube light holder okay so by the way uh, so i want to uh, 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 suggest all of you so you need to carefully observe how i am writing real time entities how i am writing properties i mean i want you to understand the font style okay how i am uh, how i am taking uh, uh -huh, identified one real time entity how i am identifying those properties how i am writing those properties i want you to observe the font of those things okay so now tell me what are the behaviors of the tube light it gives light uh is a functionality right behavior is nothing but functionality of the real time entity right gives light on or off functionality so uh, nowadays in tube lights also we are going to see a uh, remote control tube lights okay so brightness is increasing and decreasing we can adjust the brightness okay so what we so what kind of functionality it is brightness adjustment so this is also functionality right brightness adjustment so if you if we take this tube light as a real time entity so we we are successful in identifying the properties of the tube light and also behaviors of the tube light right so now can someone of can someone uh, please give me uh, one more example in real time entity i am expecting from the online people who will give me the real time example uh, i mean real time entity pavan kumar can you please give me one real time uh, real time entity as example Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Tell me. Mobile, sir. Mobile. Very good. Thank you. So now we are going to identify properties and the behaviors of the mobile. Okay. Now tell me what are the properties of the mobile? RAM. Pouch. Hard disk. Hmm? Camera. Camera. Room. Operating OS. Operating system. 
what else pawan battery battery bad very good battery hmm touch pad or keypad okay so these are the properties of the mobile okay so now tell me what are the behaviors of the mobile what are the behaviors of the mobile <clears throat> making calls tell me taking calls photos, <laughs> capturing making photos, photos making calls okay. capturing photos then messaging browsing playing the songs playing songs okay watching videos we can say watching videos okay so these are all the behaviors of the real time entity called mobile so these are the behaviors of the real time entity called tube light right so now uh, now tell me take this gives light as a uh, a behavior of the tube light so how this behavior comes into the picture based on these properties only right without any of these properties is this behavior exists no means what what we need to understand is every behavior is completely based on these properties only without properties there is no behavior exists okay let's take mobile as real time entity without ram so can we make a calls using mobile no right without battery we can't use the mobile without operating system we can't use the mobile without camera there is no capturing photos functionality capturing photos functionality okay without hard disk there is no storing the photos okay so what we need to understand from this everything in this world we can see as a real dimensionality everything in this world can be considered as a real dimensionality here one condition is there every real time entity have some set of properties and some set of behaviors okay so if there is no behaviors and properties that will not be considered as a real time entity okay so every real time entity have some set of properties and behaviors every behavior is completely depends on the properties of that particular real time entity got my point any question so far can we take one more example okay let's see so one final example i'm going to give you as bank account so can someone tell me the properties of the bank account account name account holder account holder account number account holder name Huh? IFC then, code, IFSC code, balance, personal information, Bank, branch, branch name, branch name, enough. Okay, there, okay. there are so many properties are there, but these are enough. Okay, so coming to ATM, ATM is not the property of the bank account. Okay, so it's again a real time entity. ATM itself is again a real time entity. It will not the property of the bank account. Okay. Okay. Sir. Now tell me the behaviors of the bank account. Transaction the amount on a on a account to another account. Ah, uh, deposit, deposit. Uh, Credit to deposit. The deposit, etc. and transfer balance inquiry and up okay so these are the behaviors of the real time entity called bank account so now we are good at identifying the real time entities right now we are good at identifying the properties and behaviors of the real time entity okay so now with with these three examples now we 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 understood that everything in this world is a real time entity and we can able to identify the properties and behaviors of the real time entity first of all why we need to identify the real time entities any idea why we need to identify the real time entities 
suppose let us assume here in our class uh, total five students are the uh, six persons are there uh, and in online we have uh, eight students are there okay so total six plus eight 14 students we are uh, discussing this topic right let us assume uh, some business person came to us and asking us to develop a software application okay so we are the 14 members team here and some business person okay let us take a uh, mobile shop vendor okay so he came to us and he asking us to uh, so develop a software application for 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 their business understand so what we need to do first of all we should have a clear idea about what and all the business operations of the mobile vendor what are the business operations of the mobile vendor tell me uh, buying mobiles from the uh, different vendors like mobile uh, manufacturing vendors that is one business operation selling these mobiles to the customers this is again a second behavior and what is the third behavior uh, 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 cash counter cash counter is another behavior uh, what else employees of the so business mobile shop sorry uh, mobile business shop that is another behavior what else what are the properties of this mobile shop? Uh, salesman, cash counter, reception people, founder, okay? So customers. So these are all the properties, right? So if we wanted to develop a software for mobile, online mobile business vendor. So what we need to do, we need to identify the different real-time entities in it. And also we need to we need to understand the business flows so what and all business flows we have here selling the mobile purchasing the mobiles from the different mobile manufacturing vendors okay maintaining the salesman maintaining the cash counter these are all the different business flows okay so generating the bill okay so courier these mobiles to some other location so these are the different business flows in the mobile business shop okay so if someone from the mobile business shop asking us to develop a software first of all what we need to do we need to get clarity about entire business and also we need to identify what and all different business operations are there or what and all different real-time entities are there so once we get the complete clarity then we can able to design the real-time entities from these from real-time entities we can design the classes understand Got my point? Any any questions so far? Yes. Uh, any questions so far? Okay. So now, now, so we are good at understanding about real time entity. Okay. So every real time entity have some set of properties and some set of behaviors. So if you take any real time entity called tube light, mobile, bank account, every real time entity have some set of properties and some set of behaviors. So every behavior is completely depending on the properties. So without properties, there is no behavior exists. Understand? Got my point. So now we are good at uh, real time entity, right? So now we are going to discuss about class concept. What is meant by a class? So class is nothing but it will be a group, uh, blueprint. It will be a template. So what? So how uh, how class is going to helpful to us? Okay. So once we identify the real time entities. Once we identify all the real-time entities in one particular ecosystem, take banking ecosystem. So what and all real-time entities we can able to identify there? Bank account, fixed deposit, loan, DMAT account, locker facility. So these are all the different real-time entities in the bank. Okay. So what are, uh, so can you identify the real-time entities in the uh, e-commerce ecosystem? User user law user is one real time entity product is one real time entity okay mm, what else uh, so payment gateway is one real time entity so her courier service is one real time entity so if you take any ecosystem whether it might be the e-commerce or banking or uh, hospitality reservation system if you want to develop any real time application 
if you want to develop any enterprise application first we should, we need to identify what and all business operations are involved in that what and all business flows are involved in that we, uh, first we need to identify what and all real time entities once we identify the real time entities we need to identify the properties and behaviors of each real time entity and we need to represent that real time entity in terms of class understand so now in today's class we identified three different real time entities called tube light mobile and bank account okay so every real time entities we identified properties and we identified behaviors okay so now we are going to represent this particular real time entity in terms of class okay so can we so can i go ahead and create class out of it okay let's see how to create a class using this real time entity bank account okay let's see i'm taking one more file account real time entity okay so now tell me so to represent real time entity in terms of class what i'm doing is i'm taking bank account class bank account okay so now my my first agenda is to represent these properties in the class okay let's see How to represent account number in the class? Tell me in which form account number will be there. Someone, uh, someone can tell me uh, uh, from online or new students how to represent account number in the class. That means uh, account number is in which form? Numerical form, right? Account number is in numerical form. So how to represent numerical data in the class? So for every data, we have one data type. Okay. So to represent numerical information, so what kind of data type available in Java? We have so many data types are there to represent numerical data. First one is byte, short, in, long, uh, float, decimal. So among all these data types, to represent account number, here I am taking long. Okay. Because account number is in, uh, how many digits will be there? Some account, some banks maintain 10 digit account number, some banks maintain 12 digit, some banks maintain 16 digit account number. So long is the long data type is a suitable one because we are representing a big numerical information. Okay. So now this account number I am representing with data type called long. Okay. So am I done with representing this account number here? Done, right? No other extra information I need to, uh, I can provide here. Okay. So as I'm done representing this account number, I'm ending with semicolon. Now, how to represent account holder name? String. Why string? Because account holder name is nothing but it's a collection of words. Some people have three words, first name, last name, and middle name. Some people have more number of words. Okay. So we, we are not sure. We, we cannot pred uh, predict how much length will be the uh, account holder name okay so uh, string is the most suitable one i am not saying string is a data type here but it is a type but it is not a data type so we are going to discuss about string class in our coming classes okay string is using string type we can represent the account holder name okay next so i am done with the representation of account holder name right i am ending with semicolon next how to represent ifsc code here in our uh, business requirement i'm I, I just want to so ifsc code is nothing but unique code of that particular branch right so it will be collection of characters and numerics so what is the best data type here again string coming to balance how to represent balance So balance will be in huge number, right? So it might be a small number or it might be huge number. And also it consists of decimal values also there. Okay. So how to represent a big decimal number? Because every time when we represent a class, 
when we design a class we need to consider in a worst scenario okay so balance might be in big number right so how to represent big number with the decimal values which data type is a suitable one double is the suitable one okay now personal information personal information again it's a collection of words it's a big text okay uh, our name father name permanent account number other card information our personal uh, residential address everything will be there so string is the suitable type okay so branch name anyhow we will represent with the uh, ifsc code right so here i am taking another property called account type so how to represent account type so either it might be savings account or current account okay so here i want to represent with single character if it is yes it is a savings account number if it is c it is a current account number okay so now here i am representing with cat data type so now let's see here so now we represented properties of the real time entity here so now we need to represent the behaviors of the real time entity what are the behaviors of the real time entity called bank account deposit withdraw and balance inquiry let's see how i am representing here take deposit what is the input uh, to perform deposit operation suppose we went to bank branch or we went to atm where deposit machine is there so what in what input we need to give to the bank executive or the bank deposit machine to perform the deposit operation two things are the basic ones right one is account number and amount so these two are the input we need to give to the bank executive okay got my point so now see here uh account number and amount how much amount we want to deposit so now tell me what is the type of account number long long what is the type of account number it's long what is the type of amount it's again double only okay balance is double right so whatever the amount we want to deposit that is also in the form of double only we can able to deposit in a decimal forms right thousand rupees uh, one thousand fifteen hundred and seventy five point six five so it is called allowed right so that info so how to represent that input value double okay so as this is the input we need to comprise this input within the brackets what my point so what so this input we will uh, supply to deposit operation within the brackets this will be considered as a parameters of this particular behavior understand so now tell me so deposit behavior is nothing but what it's an activity it's a functionality it is an operation in the bank so it requires some amount of time to perform that activity understand so what what and all steps will be there first they are going to verify our account number after that they are going to check whether our account number is active or inactive after that they they are going to perform uh, deposit operation after that they are going to generate the acknowledgement receipts understand so if, if we are performing deposit operation in the atm so what the atm machine will do immediately it will send an sms to our mobile registered mobile number okay so these are the series of steps so in order to perform deposit operation it requires some amount of time and they, it is an activity understand so so what we need to write here all these steps all this logic we need to write here understand so now after performing the deposit operation what we are going to get in return acknowledgement receipt will get and also we will receive an sms okay so how to represent this information string because a textual message we are receiving to our registered mobile number and in the bank they will give us acknowledgement receipt okay so that is also an information purpose only so how to represent that in class as a written type we need to mention what 
outcome we are getting out of this operation. So we will treat it as a string. Understand? So now you understood, right? So how to define a behavior in the, how to represent a behavior in the class. So this we can call it as a method, method of the class. Understand? Deposit is a method and string represents the return type. What outcome we are going to get in return after performing this deposit operation? What input we need to give to perform the deposit operation? Understand? Got my point? So here I am simply writing one return statement because I am not bothering about the logic here at least today because here our understanding is to how to represent a class from the real dimension. That is what our main concentration on. Okay. So return your deposit is Got my point? Clear? Any questions so far? Online people? No, sir. No, sir. Okay, fine. So next, we are going to represent uh, withdraw functionality. Same for withdraw also, it requires account number and amount to withdraw, right? It is also some kind of logic will be there. So what we are going to get in return? literal cash we are going to get in return even in atm machines or in the bank we are getting some cash understand so how to represent that how to represent cash cash is the form of double right so now we are returning some double value uh, some here 100.50 okay so what is the return type here double got my point so this is how we need to represent the behavior no funds transfer. Now tell me what input is required here. One is source account number. And another one is beneficiary account number. And also how much amount we need to funds transfer. Right. So what we are going to get in return. After successful transfer, we will get some message. Or we will get some acknowledgements. So that is also representing with string type only. Okay. Coming to balance inquiry. How to represent balance inquiry? So, what is the input to the balance inquiry operation in the bank? What account number is enough to, to know to know the balance? Okay. So, what we are going to get in return here? Again, string information only. We will receive a message to our digital mobile, or they will uh, uh, they will tell a display on the screen. Okay. So your balance is so this is also returning string as a data type so now see here how we are representing uh, bank account real time entity in terms of class how to represent bank account real time entity in terms of class like this any questions so far So like this, we can represent any real-time entity in terms of class. Understand? What is the usage of data type? Now we understood, right? So to represent data in the class, we require data type. Understand? So how to represent behaviors in the class? Using methods concept. Okay. So now we understood about what is real-time entity and what is meant by a class. Now we need to understand about what is meant by an object. What is meant by an object? Tell me. Instance of class. Instance of the class. Very good. So what is meant by instance of the class? Understand. So in every bank, there is a feature called savings account. Okay. So in every bank, whether it might be HDFC, ICICI, State Bank, every bank, savings account is the feature. So can we call it as a real-time entity? So we can create a class out of it, right? So the class is acting as a blueprint. The class is acting as a feature of the particular real-time entity. The class is acting as a template. So suppose I want a savings account number. What I need to do? I went to uh, I need to go to any bank and I ask the executor to create a savings account for me. On what basis they will create a savings account for me? Because they have a feature. 
we have a, they have because they have a blueprint because they have an application form in there okay so nowadays they are no uh, nobody is uh, uh, following the paperwork right so they are creating bank accounts in the systems itself okay so they are asking us they are asking us to submit all the necessary details other card proof pan card proof birth certificate everything whatever the information is required they are asking us and they are creating uh, an instance of the savings bank account feature in their branch understand so and also they are they are asking us some amount some basic amount to uh, open the savings account savings bank account so what is meant by an object object is nothing but instance of the block instance of the class this instance of the class is acting as a real existing thing understand so every one of us having the savings accounts right so all our savings accounts are, are real existing savings account real existing objects understand but for all of us the template is the same savings account template savings account blueprint savings account class is the same it it will not change understand using this feature using this template using this blueprint we are going to create objects that we can call it as an instance of the class understand got my point so every object is unique with other uh, other objects right every uh, so every savings account all of us having savings account so every savings account is independent with other understand we have our own data okay got my point so how to create an object using here tell me suppose we have a sbi kphb branch let's assume near our uh, metro station we have a state bank of india kphb bank is branch is there i want to open a what i want to open a savings account so i went to the say sba kphb branch and i went to the savings account department public static void main so what is this public static void main please don't bother about now okay we are going to discuss in our coming classes but now just understand this is the savings account department understand we went there and we asked the bank executive to create a savings account behalf of me so for that what bank bank executive will do bank executive will create exact copy of bank uh, i mean create uh, savings bank account using the feature or using the template or using the savings bank account application form okay using this they are going to create a new object okay so here we are giving name as sravan's bank account it's my bank account okay sravan's bank account is equal to new bank account right now what happens here using new keyword we are creating an instance of this bank account blueprint bank account template bank account class now we have an object in our hand in bank's executive's hand sravan's bank account so what they will do they will assign a new number new account number to me to my account number to my account okay and what they will do account holder name they will give some name whatever the name i mentioned in my address proof okay and at the time of opening an account definitely i need to give some uh, basic amount to 500 rupees is the this thing okay so etc leave it okay so now how many objects we can create here n number of objects okay so here i'm creating object for vinith vinith only right your name vinith bank account what is your name john basha okay so second time we are creating bank account for john basha okay so now see here so here we are creating three different uh, objects for the class bank account right so now how many instances of the class we created here three instances 
three instances are nothing but three different objects understand every object is unique with the other but the class is same understand got my point any question so far now we are very clear about what is real time entity what is class and what is object understand any questions so far okay I, if you have any questions i'll i'll clear okay end of the class okay so if or else you can ask me now any questions online people i hope everyone understands about object okay So now we are going to discuss about these four concepts because we have very clear idea about what is real time entity, what is class and also what is object also we understood. Now we are going to discuss about these four concepts. What is meant by an encapsulation? What is meant by an encapsulation? First of all, why we need to discuss about these four concepts? Because object oriented programming methodology is nothing but these four concepts only. In textbooks and in American pet markets, there are so many concepts are derived. Okay. But those are all concepts are derived from these four basic concepts only. Understand? These four are the major four concepts in the object oriented programming methodology. Okay. So we know about real time entity, we know about class, and we know about object. Now tell me what is meant by an encapsulation? Encapsulation. The wrapping up of data and methods into a single unit is known as encapsulation. Very, very good. What is meant by an encapsulation? Wrapping up the data and the behaviors. Okay. So encapsulation is nothing but combining the properties, combining the properties and the behaviors which are acting upon these properties only into a single unit is nothing but encapsulation so what we are doing here we are combining these properties and the behaviors which are acting upon these properties only into a single unit like this is nothing but class got my point <clears throat> any questions so what kind of behaviors are there in this particular class behaviors related to bank account only do we have any behavior related to tube light here it's meaningless right so what we need to combine combining the properties and the behaviors which are actually acting upon those properties these behaviors are acting upon these properties only so that is the reason why we are combining these two into a single unit is nothing but encapsulation how can we achieve encapsulation in object oriented programming language using class concept got got it is it clear okay so now we know about encapsulation now we have very clear idea about encapsulation right now we are going to discuss about abstraction what is meant by an abstraction encapsulation one second repeat sir sorry tell me encapsulation one second repeat sir encapsulation okay so let's see here uh what is this it's a bank account real time entity right so every real time entity have some set of properties and behaviors right let's. so let's take mobile mobile have some set of properties and behaviors now tell me i have one question for you how this making calls behavior comes into the picture Sir? only based on these properties only right yeah without any of these property there is no behavior exist yes, sir. Yes, sir. right so take bank account these are the properties of the bank account how these behaviors came into the picture only based on these properties only so yeah. these yeah. behaviors only exist because of these properties okay so now yeah. what what is encapsulation encapsulation is nothing but encapsulation and properties ni behaviors ni oka single unit ga represent cheyadame encapsulation antam take a 
uh, 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 capsule. So in medicine, we have a capsule, right? So okay. Okay. Uh, medicine, medicine capsules soon take the money key. Medicine slow. So capsule low, uh, two types of content on type. It is a composition of two drugs capsule. That is a single composition and condi tablet ki di, tablet kin the chevalu. So then in the capsule kin this narrative, it is a composition of two drugs. Okay, so upper layer and bottom layer. So, so what is so they are encapsulating two drugs into a single capsule. So it, that is nothing but encapsulation. Here also, what is going to be an encapsulation? Combining the properties and the behaviors which are actually acting upon these properties into a single unit, representing into a single unit like this is nothing but encapsulation. Got my point? So Pawan, right? Yeah. The question asked is Pawan, right? Pawan or uh, Madhu? Madhu. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, got it. Is yeah. it clear now? Yeah, clear, sir. Yeah, clear, sir. Okay. So this is nothing but encapsulation. How can we achieve encapsulation? Using class concept. Okay. So now abstraction. What is meant by abstraction? Tell me. Sir. What is meant by an abstraction? Any idea? Without including background details or explanations. Mm -hmm. Can you please elaborate? People who are in class, tell me what is abstraction? Any idea? No? So abstraction is nothing but hiding the internal implementation. Hiding the internal implementation and providing some set of services some set of services or features to the end user understand suppose let us take an example we have a bank account okay so we want to perform uh, a withdraw operation okay so what i need to do either i need to go to the bank branch or i need to go to the atm machine a a atm service center okay suppose anywhere i can go so let us assume i went to the branch okay so uh, I requested bank executive to perform withdraw operation on my service uh, savings account number. What they will ask us, sir, you have a withdrawal form, fill that form and give it to me. We will perform withdraw operation behalf of you. That is what they said to us. So what we will do, we will just fill out the withdraw form and we will hand over that withdraw form to bank executive. They will actually perform the withdraw operation behalf of us. Understand? So at that moment, do we know how they are performing withdraw? At least do we have interest to know about how they are performing the withdraw operation? No, right? We just require money from our account. That's it. So we went to the branch, we asked the executive, they provide us the deposit or withdraw form, we fill up that form and we hand over to the bank executive. They will perform that operation on behalf of us. That's it. So what is hidden there? How they are performing the withdraw operation? What steps they are going to taking care? Uh, they, they are taking care. Are they withdrawing from our account? Are, are they withdrawing from another account and giving money least bother about those information that information right so end of that story what will happen they will deduct amount whatever the requested amount from us they will deduct from our account and they will give it uh, as a cash to us understand so what is hidden in this business flow how to perform withdraw what steps they are taking care so again when i go to the atm service center we just simply injected the atm card we just enter the pin and we specify the amount we click enter button that's it so machine is working 
and we will listen that sound it is calculating the cash and finally we will receive the cash from the dispersing window so have you ever think about how that machine is internally working is it really detecting that amount from our account account have you ever think about it so we are least bothering about it right even bank also it is not providing the internal implementation to the end user it is completely hidden understand so what is meant by an abstraction hiding the internal implementation details okay so how can we achieve that how can we achieve that yes okay yes, okay so you understood right if you have any doubts you can ask me information so what is uh, what is meant by an abstraction and how can we achieve in class let's see here in bank account class now we are at which place we are in state bank of india kphp branch understand so here we have three savings accounts three of us having three savings accounts here myself so I'm using my account number i want to perform withdraw operation i am providing my account number and i am providing some amount to withdraw okay now where am i i am at sba kphp branch so i'm just invoking this method using this period operator on sravan bank account instance on sravan bank account object using this period operator i am invoking this behavior by passing input one account number and the amount to withdraw got my point is it clear so now so what is abstraction here being an account holder i am least bothering about what is the logic of the withdraw so so can i know what is the logic of withdraw here no right so because the logic of withdraw is in the class of bank account is this bank account template visible to me no it is inside the software it is part of the software understand so this is nothing but abstraction here i am least bothering about how withdraw is performing internally got it so now we are very clear about what is encapsulation and what is abstraction coming to inheritance what is meant by an inheritance tell me by the way so uh, anybody have any any questions in uh, encapsulation and abstraction child class depends on the parent depends. class child class depends on the parent class okay parent class. Uh, uh, any more answers from anyone acquire the properties from one class to another class acquires the properties from one class to another class okay any other answers let me explain okay so inheritance is nothing but it will not inherit the properties okay listen carefully it will not inherit the properties uh, child class is not not only depending on the parent class what exactly inheritance means inheriting the existing functionality into the child class understand only behaviors only inherit not data understand let us assume we have a loan account so we have a loan let us assume so suppose i have a bank account i went to the branch i asked the bank executive to give me some loan so what what is the first question i will face from them sir do you have bank account in our bank or in any other bank please give us those details so that is the first question they will ask us right so in order to acquire a loan what is the mandatory thing to have bank account to acquire a loan bank account is the mandatory why they require the bank account because they want to check our transaction history they want to check our statement they want to check our income details so how come they know about all those stuff from the bank account only so to acquire the loan what is the basic uh, real time entity is required bank account so now here to define that loan functionality what functionality is required here bank account functionality what my point so to define the loan functionality it requires 
the bank account fund strategy. So using extense keyword, we are achieving inheritance. So what, what exactly happening here? Are these properties inheriting into this class? No, no. This is the data of bank account. It will not inherit. Only behaviors only inherit. Got it? Is it clear to online people? Any questions on this? Inheritance is nothing but only behaviors only inherit. It will not inherit properties and data. Right? Got my point? So, what is meant by inheritance? Inheritance is nothing but inheriting the existing functionality into the child functionality. Got it? So, now this is nothing but inheritance. So, now we have clear idea about what is meant by encapsulation, abstraction and inheritance. What is meant by polymorphism? Tell me. So, in our coming classes, we are going to uh, uh, so discuss in depth about encapsulation, abstraction, inheritance. These, these are very big concepts. Okay. In our coming classes, we are going to discuss about it. But today we are going to discuss about the high level object oriented programming concepts. Okay. So why we are discussing about all this stuff? Because first of all, we need to know why we need to create a class. Why to identify the real time entities? Why to identify the properties and behavior? What is a property? What is a behavior? How to represent property in the class how to represent the behavior in the class that we need to understand first then only that is the, uh, we can able to understand the entire language okay so now tell me our final topic polymorphism what is meant by polymorphism so the many forms so many forms okay poly means many morph means forms understand polymorphism is nothing but many forms so here let us assume uh, i have a savings account I have a savings account. Let us assume I also have a loan account in the bank. I also have a fixed deposit. I also have a locker facility. I also have a DMAT account. Okay. So all these are real time entities only, right? So let's see here. The fixed deposits also tied up with my bank account only, right? Fixed deposit. Tied up, for, tied up to our bank account only. Loan account, anyhow, that we mentioned. DMAT account. What is DMAT account? To deal with shares. Share market. It is also tied up with our bank account only. Class, locker facility in the bank. So it is also tied up with our my bank account. So now see here, being a customer, I have a savings account in the bank. I have a loan account in the bank. I have a fixed deposit in the bank. I have a DMAT account in the bank. I have a locker facility in the bank. One fine day, I went to the State Bank of India, KPHB branch. Okay. So I have some work with my bank accounts. So, uh, so to perform deposit, I went to the savings account department. So where I given my passbook as an input to the bank institute. So by taking my passbook, that means what? By taking my account number only. So they are performing deposit operation on behalf of me. So after completed my work there, I went to the loans department in the same bank because I have a home loan. So I want to pay some ne next EMI or I want to perform my part payment. So again, I went to the loans department. What I gave you there, loan account has separate number. But also if I forget loan number, if I tell my savings account number, they will fetch my loan account details. So he, there also, based on my savings account number, they are performing my loan account operations. So after my work completed there in the loan account department, I went into the locker department. So there also I, I gave my account number and I am performing some locker related operations. After that, I went to DMAT account department. After that, I went to fixed deposit department. So in all these departments, so how I am dealing with different departments? using my same account number so now tell me this bank account object this bank account real time entity behaving differently in different scenarios behaving differently in different scenarios so what does it mean polymorphism same object behaving differently in different departments that is nothing but 
polymorphism any question so far any question so far so now we are very clear about what is meant by encapsulation what is meant by abstraction what is meant by inheritance and what is meant by polymorphism right so we are very clear about real time entity class object everything so now we are very good at designing a classes and creating objects and identifying all these object oriented concepts okay so with this topic uh, i'm done with the discussion i have completed this java demonstration if you have any doubts you can ask me any questions for online people jessica pavan kumar navya charishma manju and madhu no okay so it's it's good right it's clear right okay uh, if you don't have any questions we can you can leave the session uh, we will join in next class sir yes yes madhu no, sir no. okay sir placement as a reference by ela ketron as a concha mapi chepte vintan sir enta ma madhu cheppu malla malla sir cheppu placement as a reference sir maki ela untadi etla ela apply chestaru okay okay sir so that information uh, hemant sir will let you know okay please approach hemant sir okay sir okay so they will let you know all those details okay 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 okay, okay so if you have any uh, questions related to technology you can ask me pavan jessica charishma navya any questions okay so i'm done with the discussion you can leave the session thank you thanks for joining i hope sure. you understood the concept well uh, we will meet uh, tomorrow at same time okay sir yeah madhu tell me java gurunchi brief explain sir ante jobs ela untai ee situation enti present ela untadi dan gurinchi brief explain sir yeah so coming to java technology so with respect to all other technologies okay okay with respect to all other tools java always have an op opportunities in the market irrespective of the recession i am talking okay so even though economic crisis hits in america we no okay. need to bother because already these kind of applications are there in the market right these kind of enterprise yeah. applications Owns. nowadays there is huge requirement in the market to develop this kind of uh, so every one every business vendor they wants to have a software to enhance their yeah. business right so uh, to develop this kind of applications enterprise applications java is the one and only solution because we can provide security logging transaction multi processing parallel processing everything we can able to provide using java technology okay so don't worry we have bright feature java has always opportunities in the market okay uh, uh, i mean some technologies definitely they can suffer uh, her take power bi okay nowadays there is no opportunities for power bi because it is a tool if you depend on tool definitely at some point of time you may not have opportunities but if you depend on programming language object oriented programming language especially on java definitely will have good opportunities understand only thing is you need to have a good skill okay you need to be master in java okay so believe me please uh, practice uh, 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 regularly okay every day i am giving assignments after the class okay so please practice well so after getting the job how many hours we need to work 8 hours per day right so we yeah. need to travel to the office and coming back to the home right two hours of, uh, we need to spend on the road so means total 11 hours we need to work so start from today work 8 yeah. hours practice 8 hours okay after my class 
please go on practice please google it whatever the concepts i explained in the class please google it practice if you have any questions come to me ask me i'll clarify your doubts okay so if you practice like this if you spend eight hours per day definitely you will be in a position to crack any java interview okay got my point okay. so definitely i will help okay. you out i'll give you mini project assignments i will uh, i will take care about all of the things okay don't worry believe okay. me uh okay. practice well come to the class regularly don't depend on the recordings i'm clearly saying okay. if you depend on the recordings you will get laziness okay yeah. so listen the class online or come to the class offline immediately okay. practice after the class then only you will get a uh, sir, how, many members, sir? Sir, Sorry, how many members me? how many members this in, in this batch sir in this batch we have almost uh, 20 we are close okay, to 20 sir. okay okay so it's very uh, a small batch we have nice lab in our institute utilize that come to the institute i'll be there in institute uh, i mean in lab uh, at least uh, one to two hours per day because my work timings are afternoon okay uh, if okay. you have any questions or doubts you can you can always approach me i'll clarify okay okay sir. okay so remaining things we will discuss in tomorrow's class uh, right now i'm i'm running out of time okay thank you all thanks for joining